Hello everyone, it's Pastor Greg here from Redeemer Lutheran Church in Fircrest, Washington. Um, if you uh, tried to watch our service this morning, you may have caught it just uh, at the beginning of my sermon, so the front part of the service wasn't able to get transmitted. I'll just mention a couple of the announcements that were made uh, and give you the scripture passage uh, as kind of a, the intro into it uh, so that you can be caught up. But um, we we're asking for prayers for Dixie Bame and her whole family. Um, Dixie's son, um, uh, Scott Green, passed away suddenly on Thursday from a heart attack. Um, and uh, we'll be working with the family shortly here to talk about memorial services. But please pray for Dixie, for all of Scott's family as well. Of course, we're praying for, for um, the, the rescue teams and those that are grieving and uh, those that are have yet to be found in the in the collapse of uh, uh, of the building down in Florida, the condo, um, our hearts go out to them, and we're praying for them. Uh, on our altar today, we had flowers. Those were given in memory of Jan Olson, our congregational president, uh, from the uh, the staff and teachers of. Whittier and Wainwright schools um, in Thanksgiving for all that she did through the food pack program. Um, and so we appreciate those flowers. Um, our passage of scripture on this, and this was kind of a very hot day. Um, that's uh, why I mean, you'll see me in a t-shirt, but it's actually a record breaking uh, heat wave that we're having. Um, so I, I was joking that my, my sermon is a, is a fire and brimstone sermon without even without even trying. But uh, we've been doing a worship series on on Saul and David, and um, um, and uh, here we are picking up after, uh, actually after King Saul is killed for the first lesson. I'll give you a little bit of background and history that um, leads into the message. Um, I actually didn't preach that, I handed that out uh, so that people could read it on their own, but since we're doing this by video, I'll go ahead and read that part to you. Uh, leading into today's message. Um, we are celebrating Holy Communion during this service, so at some, you might want to pause uh, at some point or while you're listening to some music to go get some bread and wine, um, and you can join in communion from whenever you watch this, uh, from wherever. Uh, lift up the bread when I'm blessing the bread and lift up your wine or your juice during the time that I am uh, saying a blessing over that, and that is a sign of our unity as we take communion together. The first lesson for this Sunday is from the uh, first chapter of 2 Samuel. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. David ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jeshar. And he said, Your glory, O Israel, lays, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will rejoice. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you by me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So just to kind of catch us up. Between last week with David's 
killing of Goliath and the defeat of the Philistine army, King Saul loved and then hated David more and more. Once David was in the middle of playing his lyre for Saul and Saul became so enraged that he tried to pin him with his spear twice. But the people loved David. Saul gave him more and more responsibility, even leading his army. Where Saul couldn't make any headway, David would succeed. So Saul grew more and more jealous. His feelings of abandonment and incompetence grew. The people loved David, and so did the crown prince, Saul's son, Jonathan. He and David were like brothers. At one point, Jonathan put his cloak and armor on David and his sword in his hand and, and basically swore fealty to David without knowing that David had already been anointed by Samuel years before to be the next king of Israel. Jonathan even confided in uh, David that he wished David were his older brother so that he could rule instead. I wish that I could spend more time on Jonathan. He's one of the, the, the lesser known heroes, uh, biblical heroes, but his faith in God, his humility. I believe David learned a great deal about real leadership, how to rule through his dear and loyal friend, Jonathan. Finally, Saul just wanted David dead, made him enemy number one. David had two opportunities himself to strike Saul down in his sleep. But even though Saul was trying to kill him, David would not strike Saul because he still respected Saul's anointing. David was anointed himself, but was leaving it to time and circumstance. In fact, when Saul and Jonathan were finally killed in battle, the messengers were, were excited to tell David, thinking this was news that David would be so glad to hear. Saul, his enemy, was dead, and the throne was almost David's to claim. But David was not happy with the news, certainly not about Jonathan, and not about King Saul. The death of God's anointed isn't good, never good, as far as David was concerned. He was so angry that he literally killed the messenger. And so we go into the part of the service that got recorded, the message for today. In spite of King Saul's hatred of him, David wrote this lamentation, today's first lesson for the people to sing and hear. And now we join our worship service. Song, How the mighty have fallen, he keeps singing. How the mighty have fallen. First of all, I think it showed great truth and wisdom and leadership that David gave the people time and space to grieve and to lament. For one, he needed it. He needed that time. David loved Jonathan, and, and in spite of everything, Saul had been at times like a father to David, was in fact his father-in-law. So, so David grieved what he had lost in Jonathan, and David also grieved the relationship that could, could now never be resolved or restored, at least not in his lifetime. For us, for us, the, the past 15 plus months have taken time and experiences and people that we would have had and enjoyed we need to acknowledge our losses. It's not, it's not just about restarting and, and picking up where we left off. What losses have some of you experienced in these past 15 months? Go ahead. <laughs> Friends, what was that? Connections. Connections. Family and friends. Family and friends. Three, I lost three cousins. You lost three cousins. I lost a son. You lost a son. Just the ability to see people and hug them. Hugs. How many hugs did we lose? <laughs> How many conversations never happened? What losses have we had as a church? 
of many of the same things, the fellowship, the support. And there have been economic losses. Businesses have suffered. Their employees have suffered. How the mighty have fallen. In our lesson, both the king and the next crown prince were suddenly dead in Israel. And most people, no matter how much they respected David, most did not know that he was anointed to be their next king. As far as they knew, they had no leader, no king. So for a time, their sense of security and strength and direction and future were gone. Who would lead? Who, who's really in charge of this country? Oh, boy. We can relate with losing our sense of strength and security, can't we? When, when our parents passed away, or a spouse, when, when jobs have been in question, or limited resources we know can't last forever. Our daily life, our rhythms and habits and futures, I mean, ribbit, our rhythms and rituals, our habits are interrupted. Weekly worship, communion, fellowship, here or at the coffee shop. What is normal anymore? Racial and political tensions came out and seemed to be highlighted or exacerbated this past year when many of us thought that we were much further along than this. And yet, and yet this isn't lamentation and grief in a black hole. David knew, and some around him knew, that God had not abandoned them, that there was change, but there was also future, and a new leader was coming. The story was not at an end, but rushing into it was a mistake. They needed to stop and acknowledge the losses, the lessons learned, in order to know and claim what they had and that what they wanted going forward. True for them, true for us, true for each one of us. We are in a similar situation, I think. Each of us might be in a different place on the path. So I ask you to have these questions and reflect on them. What have we found that was more important to us than we realized? Again, not rhetorical. Have, have you found something was more important to you than you thought? My granddaughter. Granddaughter. Oh my gosh. The folder. Your mom? Friendships. Friendships. Watching what? How people care for each other. Watching people care for each other. Things you've learned not to take for granted. Sarah mentioned the hugs. You mentioned relationship. The time that we get to spend. The people that were here and putting on, yeah, leading service. Oh, thank you, Phyllis. What do you hope we will cherish going forward? Family, gatherings, hugs. hugs, amen. How the mighty have fallen, but the love and grace of God shown in Jesus Christ shall never fall, amen? And that is why the mighty rise up again, amen.
Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the land that provides our food. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate and empower us to protect all you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Righteous God, we pray for the nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them towards a fair distribution of resources that none among us would have too much or too little. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those suffering from physical or mental illness. Embrace those of who are sick. We especially name before you. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly and all who have gathered in worship. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection of this community, Redeemer Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us towards you. Envelop them in your love that we may be united with one another in the last days. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Will you look across the aisles and wave and extend Christ's peace to one another? Peace goes out to all of those who are uh, worshiping with us through Facebook Live or the recording as well. It's time you might want to get ready um, some wine and, uh, uh, and bread and if you're communing with us at home. I think I made all the announcements at the beginning part of the service, so I'll just ask you to continue to support the ministry of Redeemer Lutheran Church, Christ's ministry, through your offerings. There, was a, there is a plate out in the narthex. We'll bring that up. Uh, you can send it into the office, and uh, let's keep this ministry going strong.
crowds scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread. Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you and dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. The family of God is never more connected than it is here at our Lord's table. Where together we remember how in the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this, and as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And so remembering those words of command to eat and to drink, and the promise that this meal carries, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the body of Christ. This is Christ's body. This is Christ's body. This is the blood of Christ.
Will you rise for this blessing in our closing hymn? God bless us and keep us. God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. God look on us with favor and give us his peace. Amen. We join in singing On Our Way Rejoicing. Go in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs>